In the next series of exercises, we're going to begin building a very simple HTML website. This is an example of what the final product will look like. So we're going to have a home page that looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and create text and headlines. And we'll have links on our page. And we'll also have a way that the users can navigate to the other pages within our website. So when you click on the links, you'll go to other pages. I know this page looks very similar, but if we click Contact Us, you'll see that the page looks quite different. So let's get started with building this website. The first thing that we need to do when we create an HTML website is we have to set up our folder structure. So I'm going to make sure that I have a root folder and I have all the necessary components that I'm going to need to be able to build this website. So here's the folder that I'll be creating this website in. I'm going to begin by creating my root folder. So I'll create a new folder and I'll call it root just like we've done before. I know that in the root folder I'm going to want to have an images folder that'll contain my images and then in addition to that I'm going to be creating a pages folder that will contain the sub pages. We'll also need to create the files but we'll have to do that in a different application. So now I have my root folder all set and I have the two folders that are going to contain the images. For this exercise, I'll be providing you with the image to put in the image directory. I'm just going to get that quickly. And now you can see I have the bird image that I'm going to be using on my website. So now I have the folder structure all set and I'm ready to be and I'm ready to begin. I'll go into my HTML editor. Remember that I'm going to use brackets and we're going to begin by setting up our default web page. I'm going to use the brackets menu and I'm going to choose file new. I know you can't see the top of this menu but there is a menu item and it says file new. It's going to open a new untitled document. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. So I'll say file save and I'll navigate and save this inside of the root directory. So this is going to be my home page. I'm going to name it index.html and I'm going to save it at the root level of my home page. I'll click Save and now I'm ready to start creating my page. Now whenever you create a web page you're going to have to include some information that's going to let the browser know a little bit about the version of HTML that you're going to be using. There's actually quite a few different versions of HTML. In this course we're going to be using XHTML and then we'll move on to HTML5. We'll start off with XHTML because it'll help you to build a good solid foundation in creating web pages and in addition to that there's plenty of web pages that are still using the older versions of HTML and XHTML so it's important to become familiar with how those work in addition to the newest way of coding web pages which you'll probably use HTML5 for many websites but that's not to say that you can't inherit a website that somebody else built and then need to make modifications or changes. If you visit the w3.org website and I've just brought up the doc type declaration web page. So if you search for doc type declaration, you can get to this page. And what this page is going to explain is it's going to explain the various doc types. You need to start off any web page that you're going to build by declaring a doc type. The doc type declaration is always the first thing in the HTML document. It appears before even the HTML tag. The doc type declaration is not an HTML tag, but it's an instruction to the web browser about what version of HTML that the page is written in. It's important to specify this so the browser knows what to expect within the rest of your web page. On this page, you can see all of the various doc types that are available. So it starts off by giving me the HTML 4.0, which is the predecessor to HTML5. And you can see that there's different versions of the HTML 4.0 doc type. We also have XHTML 1.0. And again, there's different versions of these as well. And then there's some other versions that are specified here. You can see it's still saying that HTML5 is not a standard yet, although plenty of websites are using the HTML5 doc type. For our purposes here, we're going to be using the XHTML, and we'll use XHTML Transitional. XHTML Transitional is a little bit more flexible than the strict version, and the frame set version refers to creating a website that utilizes frames, which we're not interested in doing. So I'm going to use Traditional. 
rather than having you write all of this out because it's very specific with all the little details, I recommend that you visit the w3.org website, you find the appropriate doc type, and then you simply select it and copy it. That's what I'll be doing, and this will just ensure that I don't make any errors when I enter this code. I'm going to go back to my index.html file, and I'm going to paste the doc type in. So all this code is doing is it's just telling the browser what type of HTML document you're creating and what rules should apply to it. Once we have our doc type specified, the next thing that we need to do when we're creating an XHTML web page is we need to declare the HTML tag and we're going to pass on an attribute into our HTML tag. So I'm going to go ahead and type HTML and then I'm going to specify the XMLNS namespace. This XMLNS attribute is used by the root element of an XHTML document. The root element of the XHTML document has to be HTML and it must contain the XMLNS attribute to associate it with the XHTML namespace. It's important to understand that XHTML isn't HTML, but it's actually XML. The XMLNS attribute is just one of those things that the document needs in order to be valid XML. If you want to read more about this, you can search it up under the w3.org website and find out probably more information than you'll ever need to know about the XMLNS namespace and the doc type. What I want you to take away is that we want to be creating websites that are valid and in order to keep them valid we have to include this information. The information that goes into the XMLNS namespace is going to actually be a web address. So inside of the quotes we're going to put this web address http colon forward slash forward slash www.w3.org forward slash 1999 forward slash xh HTML. And this just lets the browser know that this is the version of XHTML that we're going to be using. In brackets, as soon as I put the closing angle bracket, brackets automatically populates my code with the closing HTML tag. Whenever we create HTML documents, you'll be entering HTML tags and elements. The HTML element is the root HTML object of the document and it is going to surround all the other objects or all the other HTML tags within the document. In HTML, most tags are going to need to have an opening tag and a closing tag. Closing tags are designated by a forward slash and whenever we write HTML tags when we're coding websites, we always use the less than and greater than symbols to surround the name of the tag. So these less than and greater than symbols, or we could refer to them as angle brackets, will surround the actual tag. So I have the opening HTML tag, then I have an attribute, which is some extra information that we're passing on inside of the HTML tag. This part of the equation is the value of this attribute and then finally we have the closing HTML tag. You'll see this format throughout your creation of websites. Not all tags will always have attributes and values, but most of the block level tags that we're going to be using are always going to have opening tags and closing tags. So it's always important to make sure that if you have an opening tag, you create the closing tag, unless you're dealing with a tag that doesn't require the closing tag. We'll talk a little bit more about those later on. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the two direct descendants of the HTML element. Those are the head and the body elements. The doc type is the only thing that goes before the opening HTML tag. Everything else is going to come in between the opening and closing HTML tags. So I'll create my head tag next and I'm just going to put some extra spaces there. I have my opening and closing head tag. We'll talk about what goes in the head tag in just a moment. And then I'm going to put a couple more spaces and I'm going to create a body tag. 
This right here is the basic structure that every web page is going to need. It's going to have to have a doc type declaration, it'll have to have HTML tags, it will need to have a head tag, and it'll need to have a body tag. Those are the required elements to make a web page. Now if I simply save my page right now, and if we go look at this in the browser, you're going to see that my page looks like this. It's not very exciting yet, and that's because we haven't created any content that the browser can actually render. But we do have the structure that we need to create our web page. Let's go back into the head tag and add some necessary elements there. The head tag can be thought of as the brains of the web page. It does some critical thinking, it communicates to the browser, and it holds elements like the title tag, meta tags, and also links to other scripts that you might be using in your web page, like external CSS files, or even embedded CSS, or script files. We'll learn some more about those things a little bit later on. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a title tag for my web page. So I begin by creating the opening title tag, then I'll have the closing title tag. Inside the title tag, I'm going to add a name, or the title is going to be the information that the browser will display in title bars, in bookmarks, in search engine results. So it's something that won't actually render on the page, but it's also very important to have it so that if someone bookmarks your page, that's going to be the name that shows up in the bookmark. Search engines use title information as well as the title bar in your browser. Let me show you what it looks like. If we go back into the browser, and I'm just going to show you the title part of my page. You can see that the title bar of my page is just displaying the name of my page. That is not a very descriptive name for my page. And if I was to bookmark this page, nothing is going to show up. I've saved my page inside of my editor, so I'm going to click Refresh. And once I click Refresh, you can see that now the name has switched to, say, Bird Watchers. Whatever I put inside that title tag is now going to display in this tab in the browser, in the title bar of the browser. In addition to that, it will also show up in the bookmarks and the search engine results. So that's definitely something that we want to include on our page. The next item that we're going to add inside of our head tag is going to be a meta tag. Meta tags can be used for lots of different things. What they allow you to do is to assign some information that will help support the web page but doesn't necessarily show up in the web page. It allows us to define metadata. The metadata that we are going to pass on is going to be HTTP dash EQ UIV and then we're going to put equals. So this is the attribute. It's the HTTP equiv attribute and then we're going to make it equal to some sort of value. We're going to go ahead and make it equal to content type. This is going to specify the character encoding for our document. So this is again going to help the browser to render our document in the way that we want it to. We're also going to pass on an additional attribute. This one is going to be content and we're just going to specify the value as being text slash HTML. This is just letting the browser know the content that it should expect on this web page and we're letting it know that it should expect HTML content. And then the final important attribute that we want to add is going to be the character set or char set attribute. This attribute is something that we'll want to add to define how our document is going to encode the characters inside of the browser. And the character set that we normally use for Western based language is going to be UTF-8. Now when I first made these attribute and values, it automatically closed the quotes on the content value. The content value actually contains the character set information as well. So I need to actually change this to a semicolon and get rid of the quotes and then I will have my character set. And you can see like right now brackets is giving me a little red quotes right here. It's letting me know that I have something that is unmatched. Whenever you have quotes appearing for a value the value always appears inside of the quotes, but right now I have three sets of quotes, so I need to get rid of that second set of quotes. The meta tag should actually read just like this. 
and if you don't set up the meta tag correctly your page will not validate so it's important to get this information and set it up correctly I know there's a lot of little details that we're talking about right now and that we're concerned with but what I recommend that you do is you set up your page, your basic skeleton that every single page is going to be referenced from, and you make a template page. So I might even change the title here to say something like, title goes here. And I'm going to just save this page as a template file. So I'm going to use save as, and I'm back in my root folder. I'm going to rename this page template and now I have a default page that I can use as a starter page every single time I want to build a web page. This will prevent you from having to type in all these little meticulous things that you're probably going to find hard to memorize anyways, but things that the web page does need. So what I recommend is that you set up this template page and then you just store it. You might even want to start with like a template root folder. So for instance, I might come to where my root folder here is and if I duplicate this folder I could just call this template start root and then I know that every time I want to start a web page or a web project I can copy my template start root folder and that's going to contain all of the things that I need in this case I might want to get rid of this index page since I don't need the bird watchers index page and then I'll have all the rest of the structure in place. So this is something that I would highly recommend that you do and this is how I will run this class. Every time we start a new project I'll probably start from the template start root folder. I'll make a copy of this and then I can rename it and place the appropriate content within the folders that I need. Now that I've done that, I want to make sure that I open up my index page that we were working on so that I'm working from that page. I'll open that page back inside of brackets and I'm just going to change my title back to the bird watchers, which is what we had before. Now we have the basic structure for our page. Even though nothing is rendering in our browser yet, this is the skeleton format that we need in order to build our web page. In the next video, we will start to add content that will actually appear on the page.